And we are live. How's it going, everybody? Once again, we're here, and we have a we are celebrating Wednesday, Comic Book Day, with a special guest. Ben here is actually Once the again, artist from here, and we have a. And, we, oh dang! <laughs> <laughs> I've done that before. <laughs> that was some sort of feedback. Ooh, the feedback. We already have people in the chat right now. They're getting ready and they're saying hello. Uh, ben, why don't you go and introduce yourself? Hey, everybody. My name is uh, Ben Harvey. Yeah, right I am now. a big figure, right uh, slash sequential artist. Uh, recently, I've been doing work for uh, Raw Blank Studios and their uh, first public. Wow, you're really robotting out pretty bad. Am I? I, yeah, you're, yeah, you're, you're probably, robot pretty bad over there. Yeah. Fix your yeah. shit, boy. Dom Allen, right, you have to fix that mic. I don't know. That was pretty edgy. A little bit? Okay, there we go. It's a little better. Better, better? Okay. Yeah, cool. that's way better. Nice. Better burger? Yes. Yeah, we'll go with that. All right. Um, why don't we try it again? You go and introduce yourself right now for everybody. Yay! Um, I am Benjamin Harvey. I am a uh, illustrator slash sequential artist, and um, I have the fortunate uh, opportunity of illustrating column for uh, Raw Link Studios, uh, which is having a Kickstarter right now to promote their uh, first, first, uh, first book that they're doing uh, called Column. And you can head over there right now. We're about halfway funded. Um, and yeah, hope that's good enough for you. Mm -hmm. cool. This is awesome. John Malin's in the chat. What's up? Yeah. Uh, or te te heal him. I don't know how else to pronounce your name, Tehillim. I guess it's Tehillim. Tehillim? Yeah, te he, he comments on some of my videos. Tehillim, yeah. tell him. I don't know. But, What's uh, up? <laughs> he's, a guy. he's a good guy. He's been on all the streams. Mullen, I know, um, also uh, retweeted and advertised Column. I, I bought Column. I like oh, it. That's very awesome. Of you. Oh, I, I really, I really like it. It's um, it, it's really cute. It's got that metal slug style and it's got kind of like a baby sort of version. I mean, it, it's it's white and some pink. Uh, anyway, everybody's quiet. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just, I, I don't want to be rude or anything. Like, you know, I interrupt and I talk too much. So I'm trying to be better about that. But um, but I, I wanted to ask, um, like, what, what inspired the style for Colin? Uh, inspiration for the style? Um, I think we hit it around the head like a minute ago. Um, no slug was very big. Uh, influence uh, on the art style. I want to kind of like a small cube, but also kind of like very obviously the book is very like military influenced. So I wanted to have that in there, but also have like sort of like a cute twist on it too. I think that's what it does. Like you're in the middle of a war zone, mm -hmm. uh, everywhere. It's like really pretty, but at the same time, this character is like very secret form. Whatever the column, I was like, that has to be. The style we go with. with this book, so. Well, I think it works out really well. Like the cute style with the reactions and so forth. And damn, you got like voice actors and everything, and just yeah. yeah. One of the, the, the great things of the writer uh, Tim Morris, he's uh, for it. not only does he have a book, you know, with a great story behind it, he also have a, has a set of professional voice actors uh, narrating sequ uh, sequences of the story along with it. So. Not only if you support the Kickstarter, you know, samples of the uh, voice acting crew. And these are voice actors that, you know, you can recognize from, like, watching. If you're a regular anime watcher, you, you know, notice them from there, you know. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's an awesome book. I'm really happy to be a part of it. Well, yeah, it's pretty cool. Like, kind of a bunch of, of, like, all these famous anime characters, voice actresses and voice actors to go and join up, which is Pretty cool. I have to. I mean, I already said that. But yeah, if you go to the Kickstarter page, you can check them out. Uh, we have a, like, I 
missing at least six, if not uh, actors that we've. Uh, actually, it's, uh, the uh, writer Tim Morris has recruited voice actor for the, for the book, and it's not you know they're they're professional. Like I said the professional voice actors there, and when you read, you feel like you're totally immersed in the book. Well, these are just some voice actors that are you know kind of do it on the side while they're going to class in college. You know, this is. He's okay. Um, I got I got to tell you though, you you keep breaking in and out a little bit. Yeah, it's getting it's like been really hard to hear you because of it. Yeah, I mean I can I can piece in what's going on a bit, but yeah, I kind of I guess it's kind of like the water, like if it's the ocean it suddenly rises and it goes down a little bit. Like sometimes you sound really clear and then other times it just kind of disintegrates. It, that was the other thing I was going to point out. Uh, John Malin pointed out too. Somebody's got music playing in the background and Oh, that's my roommate. Like, yeah, because that could uh that could affect things, but I understand if you so you gotta take your roommates playing with his guitar. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I can't stop him. <laughs> you can't stop him from anything. You can throw something at him. I you could, but he'd hate me. Hang on. Yeah, yeah dude, you're what? gonna have What's to go throw a pineapple just like got roommate. A with the guy, that's all. <laughs> I'll throw this for like a year. I'll We're throw my people. shoe at him. I'll boot to the head. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you're, you're going to turn your roommate into shoe on head. Okay. You, you know, when I was in the military, I fucking hated having roommates. Hang roommates on sucked. <laughs> Hang on a sec. Okay. I think he's really going to do it. Hello. I'm I'm Quill Sniff. Holy this, shit. This, this is my roommate. Hang on. He's got the headphones on and everything. We're all going to die. Shoe on head. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, shit. you have turned your roommate. You have Where's officially turned your roommate into shoe on head. Where's the wedding with armored skeptic? I demand to know. <laughs> we'll send you a copy of column for the wedding. Ow. <laughs> oh, God. guys, that was, that. that was good. That was good. Hey, man, shit happens. I've, I know uh, every time I still have a stream running, I got somebody that's always in the group that's like, they sound like Johnny number five trying to talk through the whole damn stream, and they just keep cutting in and out. So it happens, man. Is that your fault? Yeah. It's, it's usually it's usually me talking about Nurgle's uh, fetish for uh, Milana and Mortal Kombat. Oh, yeah, uh, pronounce it right. It's Melina. Don't no, worry. No, it's, it's, it's Milana now, Nurgle. It's Milana now. According to how Sony pronounces things, yeah, I guess. We'll get into that later. Sony, <laughs> fight me in real life. Yeah. Um, a few people in this chat right now in the live stream uh, do uh, have not read Column, and I thought it would be a good idea to have these people on so you could kind of tell them why they should read a comic like this, and then we can also discuss, like, what kind of comics do you like reading? Because it was Wednesday, so comics came out! And I, all the good <laughs> Uh, why should I? Why should you read Colin? Um, let's see. Uh, the uh, let me put it this way: if you're any any kind of like a manga fan, uh, you should definitely read Colin. Uh, it's fun. It's bright. Um, we have, like I said, we have voice actors accompanying the uh the book. So not only do you get the uh, book, but you also get the uh the voice acting as well. Very immersive. Probably the most immersive book you'll pick up this week. Um. Uh, along with uh, that, I mean, we have a great um, uh, letter. Uh, John uh, is lettering the book, so you have like that. You have, uh, yeah, like uh, posters as well, along with everything else. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's a great read. Definitely pick it up. Um, the uh, if you're into like military uh stuff like call of duty or anything of that nature definitely pick it up too uh military mangas military anime girls shooting guns girls doing stuff yeah <laughs> yeah great you read. Pick it time up. away from the boobs which is very good thank you thank you so much does yep. the book feature side boob it does, I believe. I believe in a few pages. I didn't want to go into how much boobage is in this book, but there is a good amount of boobage. If that, if everyone's you flat, already got a sale for me, good man. <laughs> if every woman in that book is flat, I will fucking sue you for lying to me. No, there's boobies. Yeah. There's boobies. 
I, I read it, and the and there's the pinups. If you, um, I know on their Kickstarter they have a uh, certain um, tiers, and certain tiers give you the sexy pinups. Yes, oh, that's yes. pretty cool. Um, I, I, go ahead. I'm if sorry. You guys the sexy pinups, side boobage, all kinds of boobage. You know, aside from man boobage, there's no man boobage, unfortunately. No boobs. But good. No boobs. Yes, there's something something in there for everybody. So there's cute guys in there too. Probably girls out there. Two main uh, characters, Jack and Hatch. You know, pretty, you know, I'm not, you know, not into the uh, cute uh, uh, service guys or anything like that. But hey, girls, if you're into that kind of stuff, you know, it's there for you. They have nice butts. I know this. Very nice butts. Oh, um, Robert Munoz wants to know: Do the do girls drive fast cars in this? I know they drive tanks. Yeah, they drive more, not, not really like uh, fast cars, I would say uh, powerful cars. If you're in, like, obviously the tank, they drive the uh, the M1. Um, we have a character driving a Humvee uh, pretty fast, so. I mean, kinda, that kind of counts. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we have girls doing a lot of stuff in this, in this book, uh, other than, you know, just standing around looking cute. Um, we have them, obviously, gunning down enemies they have uh lobbering grenades everything that you you know could ever want to see a, a military do no military. here's the question i think everyone wants to know are there strong independent <laughs> women in this comic <laughs> Funny you should ask oh fuck <laughs> <laughs> who has what a cat is that? what's going on there sorry it's quick like that <laughs> Wait, so so you're telling me that you have created a comic that gives us side boob and M1A1 empowerment? Exactly. And strong female leads. The, the leader of the uh, column tank brigade uh, is a uh, blonde-haired, uh, strong-willed female uh, who wears aviators, too. So she's kind of like a I don't know if you guys ever come across like a Harley Army kind of character who had like the you know the shades on over the entire time. She's in that that vein. She's a tough character, as well as like the, the majority of the the tank crew. Um, we have about four uh, tank uh, members. We have uh, Kara, um, Kara, and a few others. Like it right now, guys. I'm sorry, I'm like asking at the moment. <laughs> oh, it's okay. It's fine. We can made if it makes you feel any better. I'm working on a presentation for my class right now as we speak. <laughs> I am so bad. I'm so sorry. No, you're fine. Oh, well, I'm, I'm listening and I'm listening to everything you're saying. I'm putting together a Lord of Skulls model while at it. Oh, nice. <laughs> Very nice. Wait, Wait, so, so I have a I have a I have a question here. Do, yes, do these females do these females have cluster bomb uh privilege? Oh, that's Sorry. a good question. Well, actually, my question is, I have a question for you, because uh, it's you, you said this book is very much uh, seeped, in, seeped in a lot of, like, military fiction, uh, a lot of Call of Duty-esque type stuff. Do you have a history with the military yourself? Uh, me, I do not, unfortunately. Um, but my, for members of my family do. Uh, they were Air Force, Air Force guys. But uh, me, personally, no, I was a nerdy art kid. In the family, so I went nowhere near the military. Well, no, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I was just curious because you're you're heavily yeah. seeping everything into a military style thing. So it's just the curious, the wondering. Tim Morris, the the writer Tim Morris, he's the actual military guy in the group. I mean, I I take affection to it. You know, I find it kind of exciting. Um, but when it comes down to like the actual tank models and the specific gun uh, models and stuff like that, he was the one that came up with all that stuff. Um, he would just kind of tell me what to draw and I would draw it. You know, it, it was very, the thing with this book too, is like, if you were very specific about your tanks, about, you know, uh, you know in general, this is a book to read because uh, the writer Tim Morris is very specific, very picky about what he liked to see in this book, you know, and it shows as you, as you look at it, you know, all the, all the models, I use, I use actual models uh, to, uh, draw all the guns and tanks, you know, and they would, I would put down like four or five pages and Tim would have me go back and have me 
redo of four or five, you know, a few of the models because he was like, well, the muzzle in this gun doesn't look right or this tank isn't, you know, as big as it is in real life. And I'm like, okay, Tim, I get it, you know? So. Well, well, no, and, and I was just curious about that too because, I mean, you know, that's that's something I – that that's something that the military kind of breeds in you because I was in the military for four years. And, okay. like, like, me and my wife, we can't sit down and watch the movie Battleship. Because we were both sailors, we were both on ships. Oh, so no. when we watched that movie, we're like, that's not how it's like in real life, god damn it. That's yeah. not what you would do. Dude, yeah, it's battleship. It was dumb. It already had I was like oh, as soon as not I, even wearing the right you just, uniform. You just, in Battlestar, you, just in ba you just in battleship? Dude, Liam Neeson is in the movie. All you need to guesstimate in the first five minutes is that his daughter's going to get kidnapped in some way, shape, or form. Every damn movie he's in, his his child gets kidnapped. Like, no, I kid you not. Guys, think about him in all his movies. Batman, his daughter gets chucked down a pit. <laughs> um, um, Ponyo, his daughter is a goldfish. And, and it runs away and it runs off with some dude. Uh, Guardians of Gahul, he's a fucking, he's a damn owl. And he loses both his kids. And then one of them comes back and kidnaps the third. He's a really bad parent. Like, you think Taken's bad, but this isn't every movie he's in. But also, I have, to, I have to hold Nurgle's feet to the fire here on this one, because Nurgle, clearly, you don't understand something very important. If you paint the battleship pink, it's going to cost the taxpayers more money. Come on, Nurgle. <laughs> This is this is a known truth. Okay. Also okay. to put it also to put it in dry dock would be a pain in the ass. Uh okay. Well, first of all, let me let me dispel some some stuff here. A ship will go into dry dock at least once every 5 years, and it's standard routine for it to do that. It'll go into dry dock for every 5 years, and that's usually to refit it, to fix things inside of it that need to get fixed. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, is, that to, is that to bring it into dry dock just to repaint it a different color would be a stupid ass move. Especially. You you would never yeah you never even see that happen and two uh I you would talk about wasting taxpayer dollars I'm not even gonna tell you how much fucking paint we've wasted and how many times we did what we called night ops where we'd go out and throw the empty buckets over the side of the ship in the middle of the night. That sounds like. <laughs> Thank thanks thanks pollution. <laughs> I mean okay. Play it. Play it. Nearly every time that we would pull into a port, we would paint the entire side of the fucking ship. Like, the whole side of it. Why? Not to fight the rust. Not to help it. Just to make her look pretty. That's dumb. I, mean, well, I, was, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, Nurgle. The fact, that you're, uh, the fact that you're saying pulling into port and calling it dry dock, that sounds like, uh, sounds like internalized misogyny and there's sexual harassment Whoa. here. Whoa, watch out, guys. We got ourselves a real sexist here. <laughs> <laughs> I am the sexist one in the room. Oh, that's not a good spoiler, thing. Spoiler warning plot twist. Yikes. I am the sexist one. Watch me oppress the men's in the room. That's uh, not the men. But, nerd, you're a woman. You can't do that. <laughs> but I quite like being oppressed. That's, that's impossible. You fucking oh cunt. well, of course you like being oppressed, Nurgle. You're over here. The, you're you're the one over here that wants to uh wants to wants to do the the naughty with uh, uh the the teethy one from of Mortal course, Kombat. We have to go back to Melina and this. But, um, <laughs> I gotta answer the five the uh, the phone. Right. The uh, the wife is a call on me. Okay, go right ahead. That's fine. I actually do have another question for Ben, though. Um, you do all your work in digital. I'm taking it from what I saw. Well, uh, depends on what you're talking to me. <laughs> Some days, um, if I am doing uh, commissions. Uh -huh. I'm usually working uh, traditionally on paper. Um, and some days I'm working on sequential stuff, which I tend to do. Uh, well, sometimes I do them uh, traditionally, but uh, for uh, column, I did the entire thing digitally in uh, Manga Studio, which is called uh, Clip Art Studio, I think now. So. Man, everybody's using it. Like everybody swears to it. I own it. I Areas like it, it, it's it's like Photoshop. I tell everybody this. It's like Photoshop if you're a Photoshop person. Um, only it's just for sequential art. You know, it's amazing. I can't praise it highly enough. 
I mean, it's cheaper too. Like, what you have to pay fifty a month for Adobe? Yeah, for Photoshop. You know, uh, that's, why that's, like that's assuming you're you're buying. You're not just buying the program out right now. We're waiting for a new version. Exactly. Exactly. I think you can get like twenty dollar a month plans, but I'm not. I haven't. Really it's retarded. It. It's stupid. Yeah. It's like every single time. And then if you get one of their expansion pieces or whatever, you whenever they update, you have to purchase a brand new one of their expansion pieces. It's like buying a AAA title. It's so dumb. And AAA titles suck for that reason. I don't want to play your Star Wars Battlefront if I have to buy loot boxes. Do you need, do you need a hug, nerd? No, I'm okay. I'll, I'll play God of ben, War. Uh, Good, because I want to give it to you anyways. Ben, I have a question for you. I'm I'm not sure. familiar with the work you've done or what you're working on currently, but would you say that you're enjoying your work more now than working, say, in a quote-unquote professional capacity, having to, say, if you had to go work for Marvel, IDW, DC, or are you having... Are you enjoying what you're doing more um, just having a little bit more freedom, I would I guess would be the right yeah. word. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I, I do enjoy working freelance, uh working for smaller publishers. Um specifically I had a blast working on um column uh because uh Tim and uh Mike, uh the writers and you know, the music uh composers of the book, they uh I had an open, open, open uh, deadline with this, basically, you know, for the most okay. part, you know, and that and that leaves me a lot of room to kind of take my time and play around. Whereas if I was working like for IDW, which I have before, um, doing some turtles work, uh, it's you know two weeks, two week deadlines, and you're staying up all night, you know, uh, trying to get that finished. Um, so yeah, so along with that, I'm doing like commissions and stuff like that too, like fan commissions that people like uh, give to me like through uh, comic book uh, conventions and stuff like that, which is a lot of fun to do too. Um, so there's like a give and take to, to doing uh, this line of work. I mean, you are, if you want to be, you know, you want to level up your name, you're going to have to like grind and like do four or five, six books a year at 26 pages a book, you know, and, you know, kill yourself. Um, but it'll be worth it. Yeah for the exposure you know I'm, I'm 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 getting there i'm just kind of you know enjoying the the freedom of doing commissions and just kind of like being my own artist right now you know so yeah i hope that oh. answers your question yeah well if i if i can follow up real quick would you would you say that if you're allowing uh i'll use the term content creators because i feel like it actually is relevant despite being cringy if you allow content creators or people that are actually doing work uh, freedom to do something that they actually enjoy, do do you think that the quality of work that they produce is better than having to, you know, walk on eggshells? Like if you're trying to work for Marvel or IDW, being the two, the yeah, two poster um, poster children. Yeah. I mean, as an artist, I mean, you're kind of pigeonholed sometimes, you know. Um, if you're working for like the big three or, you know, or any publisher, you know, they have a, a, a deadline they want to meet, you have to meet it. Um, and it kind of takes a lot of fun out of the art, you know, um, I know a lot of artists that kind of just kind of burn out after a while and you can see it in their work. They're just not having fun anymore. And then they leave the scene and they kind of do their own thing for a while and their, their work, you kind of see it in the line work and the color, it just, it lights back up. You know, so yeah, yeah. I say, I say, a lot of artists that are working right now, nine times out of ten, they would probably rather be doing their own thing rather than drawing Captain America or, or Batman. <laughs> you know, as fun as that sounds and awesome as that sounds, you're drawing some other stuff and you don't really own it. You know, at the end of the day, um, and creativity never really comes out from you more so than when you're working on something that you're passionate about. You know, so. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I get that as someone who's drawn Spider-Man a lot recently. I think. That it gets cut. It doesn't get necessarily boring after a while, but you start wanting to make your own properties. Because, exactly. while, because while drawing Spider-Man has really helped my dynamic posing, 
it hasn't really necessarily challenged my creative output. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's just it's Spider Man, and anybody can draw Spider Man. You know. Um, when it comes to like creating your own character, you're drawing from. In I mean, everybody knows what Spider Man looks like, but if you're drawing from a character that you know you've made yourself, you're a literal who. Yeah, it's all you. You know. So. And, and, uh, okay, so I'm I'm curious, just from the perspective of an artist. If you had to give advice to any of any of the big three, uh, what what advice would you give in order to, I guess, you know, rekindle the fire within, uh, be it writers, editors, uh, artists? Uh, what what advice would you give to any of those companies to say, hey, the this is what you have to do in order to make artists actually passionate again about comics because personally i'm of the opinion if an artist is passionate about their work the people who read it and enjoy it they're going to be passionate about what they consume uh, yeah. what, what would you say to those people uh and what would you say to the cb sabolskis of the world <laughs> yeah good old cb um he uh i mean if i were to give any kind of advice is to just you know not treat your artist as cogs in the system i mean that's kind of like a cliche you know statement but uh well that's what happened you know, we're just like any i mean as artists it's just like any other kind of like production worker you know you give us things to do we'll do it you know but if we're miserable it's going to show you know if you're like you know drawing sequentials you know or if you're like assembling i don't know radios in a factory somewhere you know the shows on the work um it's kind of hard to say like what is specifically to do to like kind of rekindle the fire in a lot of these companies. I mean, the fire is there, um, but it's become such a, it's not the business that we've known in the past, uh, the business of the past, the cop, the comic book company, Marvel, the DCs, uh, you know, the past, um, they aren't there anymore. This is, this is a whole new century now and the companies have changed along with it. It's very, movie centric now um synergy and yeah yeah You're gonna die out so. well, that that that's a question i would like i was thinking i wanted to ask is like i mean where do you see that the the industry is truly headed here because i mean a lot of people say that okay you know part of the problems with the dying comic book industry is because of the sjw shit but we know it's a multi-layered issue. We know that it can't just be all one issue, that we can't just nail it all on saying it's all the SJWs over here at Marvel and over mm -hmm. here at IDW, you know? So what is, what is it you feel is part of what's making the industry die? Or is the industry actually just morphing and changing into something completely different than what it used to be? Yeah, I agree with that last statement. I agree that it's, it's definitely changing. Um, just like any industry changes over time, you know, I think there, uh, for years, like Marvel was trying to get movies off the ground. You know, they wanted to have these properties, amazing properties that they couldn't do anything with because the technology wasn't there. Um, and now they're hopping on board with that, you know, and changing their business strategy. Now they're all about, you know, the books that come out now, I guarantee you, they brought back the Fantastic Four because they're trying to launch that probably in two years. You know, um, and no matter how they're gonna get that done, they're gonna get that done. You know, they have to step over artists, make their artists unhappy, and you kind of see that now too, uh, with a lot of artists leaving, uh, like Olivia Coipel and uh, Tom. I think Tom King left uh, Marvel recently to DC. You know, well, yeah, he's been writing Batman for quite some time now. Okay, I got, maybe I got it mixed up. Um, but yeah, they lost a bunch of talent recently, Marvel. Um, and I think the main main cause is them kind of taking their creative talent for for you know well, uh, not bad, you know um, not well, well and not you know letting them letting something like this happen you know losing a, a huge amount of talent in the past like two years is a huge shame you know um, and it kind of shows like where their where their focus is right now. Well, Ben, I'm gonna. I'm going to direct this question at you, but it, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, 
I'm going to direct it at you, but this is really directed at everybody. Do you think that the industry as a whole has in a way gotten complacent and doesn't want to let creators have creative freedom to say like, okay, we, you know, let's create a new Robin or let's have a new sidekick for Captain America or Batman. It, no, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to like, like, you know, as an independent creator myself, you know, it's, it's hard to like break new characters into, into the scene, you know, and look at Marvel with, you know, all the stuff that they've been doing the past, like three years with a lot of the multi-ethnicity books and stuff like that. I mean, old hats like me you know we just are kind of a, you know a stranger that kind of stuff like ooh, no i don't want to read that you know i want captain america i want spider-man i want you know my old batman back you know but like, it's, all that, you guys well, you know, it's it's the youth as well like dude they're making movies and so they're like i want to go and read thor and thor's a woman or somebody completely different with a different story and it's like this is no uh, well, well it's it's kind of where it's kind of where like i brought up my myself when i was saying you know with dc and marvel it's like okay there's a reason dc is doing so well in that field okay. compared to marvel is because dc is like yeah we have clark kent over here we have bruce wayne we have all these characters that you've loved forever they're still here they're still doing exactly what they've been doing for years oh. and over here though we have these newer characters that cater to that weird, uh, I guess, I'll, I'll just say the SJW audience, you know, that cater to that SJW audience, you know, instead of taking away, we they keep adding to it. Whereas Marvel's like, oh yeah, did you like Thor? You like Thor Odinson? Yeah, fuck that. Now you got Fem Thor. Here you go. Y'all, you're going to read that whether you like it or you're not. And if you don't like it, go fuck it yourself. You know, that's basically how I see it with Marvel is. No, it, it definitely is. They're forcing out the old crowd because they don't think that they're going to stick around, which they're definitely not sticking around because of all the actions that they're doing. But the new crowd isn't that interested anyway. Actually, I've... And that's kind of my point. Hold on, hold on, one at a time here. Somebody about to say something. What was that? That was me. Um, I've got a question because we're, on, we're talking about this, and I, you guys can hear me, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, that raises the question of, should heroes be allowed to age and retire? Like, is the status, yes. does the status does the status quo have to be God? Because in the past, we've gotten some really good stories of of legacy heroes, Wally West becoming the Flash, or like Jessica Cruz and Simon Baz. They're good minority heroes because their stories are well told. Legacy heroes, I don't think, are inherently bad, and allowing the later heroes, the earlier heroes, to retire, and then letting like Dick Grayson become Batman. That was a good status quo change, and it was for the better. It aged the heroes, and I'm and I think it's weird to say that like we have to stick to this status quo of these heroes must always be these heroes because change is bad. Well, and that that kind of touches on the point that I was really trying to bring up is, uh, and again, I'll I'll readdress this. If you're looking. If you're looking at the state of the industry, having to take legacy heroes and repurpose them to uh, a new age or, or a different, or try to pander them to a different audience, be it for better or worse, it, is that the status quo? Is there a stifling of the ability for creators to just simply create new heroes? It, can Batman have a new sidekick? Is is that something that would be looked at, looked down upon or just shot down in the industry completely? Well, they are, we... they just gave him a new sidekick, the signal. Yeah, but no well, signal. Is that a problem? Does that does that stifle creativity? Does yeah. that turn away readers? Uh, how does the industry approach this approach well, this okay. problem? Because I do think it is a problem based upon the sales numbers. It. If if we're taking legacy heroes and we're making Thor into a female, we're turning Captain America into a Nazi. What? Why are we doing this? What is the purpose? Uh, the purpose can we just leave Captain America as Captain America and let creators create new characters, or are they forced to stick to what the company thinks is going to sell? Uh, sell. Does Captain America always need to be Captain America? It, yeah, there was 
like when Bucky when Bucky took over his cap, people thought that that was okay because it was a natural progression, and the same happened with Sam Wilson. Yeah, yeah, I I remember whenever I heard about Sam Wilson taking over the wall, I was like, hey, that's not a bad idea because Sam Wilson is such a close friend and close fighter alongside Steve Rogers. It made sense to give him that. Yeah, I thought so too because I actually really liked him in the films, and then um. I was like, oh no, they're getting rid of him as Captain America. Who's going to be Captain America? It's Sam. Oh yeah, that guy. He like hangs out with him like all the time. That makes sense. Except it's how they write him afterwards. That's the issue that will decide everything. Well, I mean, the the first Reminder, the Reminder run was good. It was the Spencer run that flushed down the toilet. That's like a nightmare. He's just. Uh, and now he's writing Spider-Man and everybody's like, let's give him a chance. Oh, yes, let's give a chance to the man that made Captain America a Nazi. And, and well, just- it, it's just like everybody's saying, well, let's give Tanishi Coates an, uh, uh, a chance. I'm like, no, I don't want to give Tanishi Coates a, 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 a chance. If you looked at what he's done, I mean, the dude, I mean, look at just look at his history. You look at it and you go, this guy is the most un-American asshole ever, and you gave him a symbol of the American patriotism. Why did right. Christopher Priest? Oh, that's right. He won't work for Marvel because they kept because he's the reason he's typecasted. Like he has this undying hatred for Marvel now. Oh, he Marvel is actually racist. What? That's kind of my point, though. How how does this affect creators, and by extension, how does this affect the content that these companies are producing? Well, uh, let's use let's use Nick Spencer as an example. Would you rather write Nazi Captain America, or would you rather write a completely new character as Red Skull's brother? I'd rather write the Red Skull's brother story because it doesn't tarnish or destroy another creator's work. Because I see creator always the creator gets first. Well, no, by that logic, then we have to give, we have to go through um, Kirby's estate. So that leaves a lot of, the, and you'd have to fight through multiple the different creator, creator, not the, like the family of kin at times, but that's what they have to do with Superman all the time. The, the thing is, that's what I'm saying. Be, you, have to, you have to go through multiple people. It wouldn't just be one guy saying, okay, sure, you can do uh, this with them. True. But, no, I know, I know it's difficult, family. but that's not that's not it's the point I'm actually trying to bring up. The point I'm trying to bring up is, does does this provide the people who are actually working the in, working in the industry? Does this provide the creators any reason to actually produce content that people are going to want to consume, let alone be willing to pay money for? Because I I see people getting as correct me if I'm wrong. I see creators within this industry just lacking passion for what it is they're actually doing. Mostly well, like it comes from royalties. Yeah, it's royalties beneath them. It's a lot of people also just make a character to, as they said, get the royalties for a film buff. Like I'm pretty sure several of these characters are just being made. So then if they ever get made into films or something, they get some rights. Except here's the bad part and the negative part about that. Marvel doesn't pay you jack for anything you create. Sterling has confirmed this. That if you he made Thanos, he made Gamora, he made Drax, and he barely makes a dime on that. But meanwhile, he went to DC and he made like twice as much with all those characters combined with a side character shown in Batman versus Superman. A terrible film. And he still gets respected over there. And there's it does show how they feel about their creators and Marvel really doesn't care like did you hear what Axel Alonso said about his artists that he can just throw one away and get I know he's gone now but he he was mocking artists he said that like he pretty much said that they're a dime a dozen he can get another one for cheaper in another country which is why we have so many Italian and Mexican artists I mean like think about it like people like Ben here he, he works hard, and he's from, I, I think, America. I could be wrong. <laughs> As apple pie. Oh, sweet. So, yeah. So, we have our American Ben here, and he, he would get stifled over because there's somebody in another country that, like, can do it for cheaper, and we don't even know if they're good or not. It's just, they're cheaper. That's all they're picking up nowadays, too. It's like, let's get the cheapest artist that sucks at art. America Chavez. I'm sorry. I try to be a nice artist, but oh my gosh. In my in my opinion, I think the 
the in the past 20 25 years the environment has just changed well, it's become very um, incestuous actually i find like where it's it's very it, it, compared to 25 years ago it's extremely hard to be a freelancer right now especially with comic books um where you, like you know you may be hot one second not the next be on a book one second be dropped the next and then what do you do you know you're scrambling to get the next book so that's why i think a lot of the I mean, the creators right now are coming from overseas, like we're environments where, unlike America, where art is like appreciated, you can live off of, you know, what you make as an artist, you know, um, compared to what it is in the States, like you're, if you're working freelance, I mean, you're kind of on your own. Um, we don't really promote art here in the States in like schools and stuff like that. It's more about business, you know, and, you know, how fast you can be an accountant, <laughs> you know so um and like and like we were saying earlier it shows in the work you know we're it, you can look at a lot of pa pages right now and a lot of these guys are just like filling artists you know they're trying to make it to the deadline so they can get that check to move on to the next book you know regardless of how this thing looks at the end of the day as long as i get paid you know where I'm somebody in the industry, they can have you know, an entire month you know or more to kind of work on something or just be in a better environment um maybe better trained and you know better appreciated as an artist it shows yeah. in their work. No. I don't know. I'm like, willing to know. give. Oh, sorry. Are you saying something? Oh, no, no, no. I'm saying a lot of the, lot of the European artists. I mean, not, I'm not going to put them down. And I'm not saying they're stealing my, you know, my page or my dinner or anything like that. But uh, they are amazing artists over there. And it shows in their work because they are just raised from birth to be artists. Um, yeah. The States here, we are not. We don't promote art here in the States. We're a very art lacking country, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Um, I don't know. Yeah, like you were saying, there's a bunch of incredible Italian artists. Like you got Stefano Castelli, Pepe Larraz. Is Pepe Larraz Italian or is he um Spanish? Maybe Spanish. But regardless, a lot of European countries have a lot of amazing artists. So I don't think it's necessarily that they're stealing oh, no. jobs. But like we have that issue with like like the X Men Gold thing, which is what I'm talking about. Is that they get artists, they don't know jack about them sometimes, and they literally, he went on record gloating about it, that he's paying them pennies. And it's like, that's a dick move. That Isn't that Perlmutter who said that? Um, It was, I think, Alonzo that said it. And that is the reason that um uh, Romita Jr. left Marvel permanently, and he said, if you value your art, don't go to Marvel. It's, it wouldn't surprise me if either one of them said that, because... Ike Perlmutter is a horrible person, and Alonzo is too. So yeah, they're not very nice people. But um, so from what I know as well is that um, this is another really nice thing that DC does, and I don't mean to shell DC so much, even though I'm a diehard DC fan, is that they they decided to open up. Back in the day, an artist was allowed to have some creative insight or or conversation with their with a the writer and and make decisions themselves. Like Steve Dicko, I mean, Dicko is known as one of the creators of Spider-Man because of this. Like, he did put in stuff. Apparently, he's the one that wrote what Mary Jane would look like and all this other stuff. So, pretty much, they had a say back in the day, and then later on, it just became a very restrictive thing where you couldn't do this or that. But um, DC has opened up the creative table that they will allow the artists in. Like, they're, they're, they're non-freelance, but, like, their contracted artists are allowed at the table to talk about what they what they prefer. I don't think that's necessarily a DC exclusive thing, or at no, least it's not. I'm just because saying. I remember when um, Transformers More Than Meets the Eye was doing when Alex Milne was on the art. Yeah. He frequently went off script, like a lot, and I think that in some ways More Than Meets the Eye was for the better without um, with with Milne kind of vetoing out James Roberts' work, but. I think it's mostly just Marvel needs to work on their creators' rights rather than just, you know. Yeah. That's the, that's that I will give Marvel this chance because this is a brand. Remember, we have to remember this is a brand new editorial editor in chief, and for all we know, his policies could be totally different. And from what we've seen, from what Crawl Space has documented at C two E at C two E two. Um, Savolsky seems like a very nice person, very approachable, very accepting of interviews, and he he took a picture with Crawl Space with an I love Crawl Space yeah. sign, which Alonzo never did. So okay. at the very least, we have a more approachable editor in chief. So this could 
be very telling of the immediate future of Marvel going into 2018. Yep. I, I, I am hoping they get their act together because I am very tired of their actions. But uh, Tim Morris is in the chat. He said, with the exception of equipment accuracy, I pretty much ran every artistic creative decision by Ben during Column's creation. That's awesome. Yeah. Like I said, it was very of, in uh, how the, and, uh, Out of curiosity, uh, yeah. just to pose the question, uh, I, I want to know the answer of somebody who's more of an industry insider. Uh, do you think that creativity is dead within the, you know, the top tier a list uh, echelon of the industry or is it just is it just reliance upon legacy characters and storylines it is there anything new that's going to come out are there any creative individuals who are going to make the next uh what if or the next infinity war the next the I next whatever, that, regardless of what it is. Yeah, I think it, the creativity is definitely not dead. Um, you can look at characters like Miles Morales, who's like come about the past, like, what, 15 years or so. You know, you couldn't imagine that, like, 25, 30 years ago. You know, and that was part of their, you know, creativity, creativity drive, you know. Um, so I don't think it's actually dead. I think with the way the business is, they're very cautious, you know, with the way the pe things have been in the past two years of Marvel, you know, you can kind of see why, you know, they try to throw something at the wall and it may stick and the fans may hate them for it, you know, but, you know, they have to, like they said, they have to kind of try carefully with these things, you know. Well, um, it, you know. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I mean, it's like when you when you look at Marvel, yeah, they're throwing shit at the wall trying to see what's going to stick. And I understand that. And they're playing with things. And that's always good that they're trying to explore. But the problem that we see with Marvel is they keep hiring writers and artists that can't shut up about their politics. They can't leave it out of anything they write. And honestly, that's part of the problem that's with the industry, especially with Marvel. I find it like it's not only that though. It's also I mean, like it's fine to progress or change stuff up, but they don't want to change stuff up. And when they change stuff up, it's in the completely wrong direction that it should. It should be, as we said, a logical form of progression. Like I don't know, like Superman right now, he's married and he has a kid. It's like logical progression. He was he was like it's not him ma becoming a magic sorcerer. It's him working on a farm for a while, and then it's like, we're going to go back to a uh, small, uh, we're going back to Metropolis. It's like, that makes sense. And you have a kid, and now you're experiencing, like, brand new things with a little bit more of, like, the original sh stuff stuck in there. It makes sense, not, like, all this weird, wacky stuff for the sake of being, like, edgy or different. Because it's fine to be different, but you have to take it slow. And this is just too stupid. They they go everywhere with it, where it's like, Tony Stark's adopted! And it's like, you have just retconned, like, 43 different stories. Like, this whole entire thing of addiction was supposed to be inherited by his father. Now you just have ruined all of it. And now you're saying there's this kid that's, like, ten times better than Tony or whatever. It's like, this is so stupid. Shut up. Right now. Like, now. Shut your face. But they don't. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Brain fart. Sorry. Yeah. That's just me. I mean, everybody's got their own decisions, and of course, everybody's talking about dance lot now because they all know it's my stream, and they all know. They all know. Well, nerd wonder. I just told Sony all about how much you just want to see a one more day movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I seriously, I did. I just tweeted out to Sony. I hey, nerd so wonder really it. wants a movie based off of One More Day. I hate you. <laughs> How dare you tell them these things? Nurgle, are you? I wouldn't be a chaos god if it way. wasn't me, man. I wouldn't be a chaos god if I didn't call a bunch of shit. Now would I? Well, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, yeah, that is one of the worst things they did. It made them lose what fifty thousand subscribers. I think it was more of like forty-five or something like that readers within that a short period of time. They lost that many in a single night. Like, hey, your boy Kanye West lost nine million million followers in like the last uh, couple hours. 
She's got like oh, God. billion though. It doesn't matter. <laughs> In that regard, he's still going to make billions, but except in a dying industry, especially when you can only make a hundred thousand. Like back in the day, he Spider Man used to sell around the same top as Batman. How much does Batman make? A hundred thousand. Like every time it's released, and he used to get there, but except now he's lucky to even hit seventy. It's usually on the sixty k side, which is okay, but it's just mediocre. Yeah. The same. I, mean, I think it's just a simple much, industry collapsing as a whole. Because, how, like, how much has, uh... Can you let me use this as my point? <laughs> I'm kidding around. I, I want to see, uh... I want to see Kanye West versus, uh, Eminem. Oh, that, that's God. my next town oh hall debate. Oh my gosh, I it can happen now. I, I want to see that CNN town hall debate, Kanye West versus Eminem. It'll it'll be amazing. Oof. Well, I mean, the thing is, is when you look at it, I don't think so much the in- industry is a hundred percent collapsing. I think it's more of it trying to evolve. Like it looks like they're trying to slowly, like the gaming industry, move away from the physical media and move far more into just straight up digital media. Because I mean, honestly, let's be serious. It costs far less to produce digital media than it does uh, physical media. <coughs> I mean, you don't have to, um, excuse me, you don't have to produce a physical product. I mean, it, it costs nothing to make copies of a file to download, you know? And I think that's where they're ultimately trying to go. But in the end, I don't think people seriously are ready to truly throw away with physical media. I don't think anyone's ever going to be truly comfortable with going all digital sooner or later, especially with the notion of knowing that you don't really own the product that you purchased because of that. Yeah. Like there's some, there's some satisfaction, like holding a, holding a real life comic book in your hands. And then, like, you got all these people in, like, shelf threads on 4chan who, like, collect trades and put them on their bookshelves for fun. It, it feels satisfactory. Well, well, I don't even think it's just that. And, Nurgle, to touch on your point a little bit, I, I really do think a big part of the issue has to do with the way that the industry is treating its creators. It, I put yourself in the <laughs> shoes of let's say Ben or put yourself in the shoes of hell Ethan Van Skyver uh, or anyone who is not within the uh, right think uh, mentality that has overtaken media, be it comic books or otherwise, it, it's not going to be quality content. I mean, what motivation would you possibly have to go out there and write uh, Captain America? Why, why would you want, like, here's your here's your job. Go write Captain America. By the way, uh, Captain America's a Nazi. Do you really want to write that if you're a Captain America fan? Uh, do you think you're going to produce quality content? It, no, you're going to sit there. You're going to you're going to write whatever it is that needs to fit a quota. It's going to be mediocre. It's not going to be something that people are going to be passionate about. They're not going to want to read it. It's not going to be that good. It, 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 it's just not. Uh, if you're not passionate about something, especially in any realm that's creative, be it writing prose, uh, doing artwork, even just editing something, if you remove the passion from it, why, why would anyone want to actually consume it? It's going to be crap. It, it's that simple and that's what I think these industries have that's the pitfall that they found themselves in and that's why you don't want to engage in politics or essentially trying to push a narrative or trying to pick a side so to speak uh, yeah sure you can bring up the question you can make the question apparent you could use it as a plot line and it's been done time and time again where you can use those questions be be it left right center political you can use those questions as a plot line to push forward a plot 
But if you choose one over the other and you try to force people into a specific narrative, it's going to turn it into crap. And at the same time, you're going to kill the passion. It, it's not going to be enjoyable. It's just not. That's my perspective, at least. If somebody disagrees, to tell me. Let me know. But yeah. that's the reason I think Marvel has completely and utterly failed, is because they chose a side. I mean... That probably applies to the corporate, to the company-wide perspective, because I know that in DC they certainly have their own political ideologies. Batgirl just seems to be like either a containment book or. I mean, they gotta they gotta appeal to it anyway, because they know it's an audience and they will like to appeal to it. But they know that there's a diehard fan base that will always stick around. But so they're like, okay, well, we gotta give it to one iconic character that isn't one of the big three. So they're like, okay, sidekick, he's got a bajillion of them. Batgirl's perfect fit. So stick her in there, stick, and then we have, um, what, the, the animal books? They, they do a bunch of side series where they're all like, you, we can put some SJW stuff in here, and in here, and in series that nobody has heard of for years. And in fact, they don't really butcher anything inside those stories, which is great. I mean, there's other issues I do have with Marvel when they like brought up Mockingbird. And I'm like, and they were like pushing this heavy feminist agenda. But except when they pushed that heavy feminist agenda, he didn't look like a feminist. He looked like a mis like part of my language, guys. But she looked like a sexist, misogynistic pig from how she acted because immediately she was saying there were no women in the Avengers. There were no women. It's like that's a lie. There what was is, what is Wasp? Yeah, what is Wasp and Scarlet Witch and Jacosta and She Hulk? Fucking she how did she forget fucking She Hulk? Because it didn't fit her narrative. That was the thing. And then of course, the way they wrote it at the end, it was like she pretty much stated the rape never happened. It was like, I went with you willingly. It's like then then instead you murdered a man in cold blood and then accused him of rape to get away with murder. You're a rape accuser. That's disgusting. Why is this in a book? And so it's like literally people can't. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to actually blame this on somebody else. I'm going to blame it on the writer. The writer can't write. The writer was really trying to push a narrative and wanted to make a pamphlet and forgot. You don't know how to fix these things because you never read them. Because if you read this shit, you would understand how bad this looks. Because it took me, I didn't even read most of that. You want to know what? I read pieces around, like I was asking, what's the big hubbub about the, the Mockingbird? And people show me the pages of the original Mockingbird about that rape scene and why she broke up with, with Hawkeye in the first place. And then I looked over and then they gave me the pieces from the book. And I looked at both of them. And I go, yeah, this totally contradicts themselves. And this automatically makes her look like a monster. Top keck. Yeah, it was. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I'm gonna side with the. This is a mockery of mockingbirds. <laughs> but uh, either way, she's just a black canary knockoff anyway. Uh, and actually, here's a funny thing: nobody cares if if uh, if Green Arrow's an SJW, do they? Nobody cares if he's an SJW because it's part of his story. It's part of his character. It's part of his life. You don't force your own narrative or your politics into something. Like, uh, I think Ethan once said that uh, if he had to write uh, Green Arrow, I mean, he would totally still keep him as a liberal, a diehard SJW, because that is who he is. You don't change a character for that. And it's really important, because I think it would suck if Ben here, like, let's just say that somebody takes over their comic. Like, like let's think about that for just a moment. If, they, if somebody took over Column, and they decided that there's too many cute girls in Column, <laughs> How would you feel about that? And 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 uh, uh, where should we go with this, guys? Should we go? Should we go with the Scarlet Strike Force syndrome on this, or should we start lighter? I'll let you guys decide. You know what? Just go go all in. Just just bring the pain. I forget right? even his name. Bring the, guy, the fucking pain. I remember this. He was stating he was gloating all about. It. So we're gonna say. Are you talking about Aubrey Shitterson? Are you about yeah, to talk about Shitterson? Aubrey Shitterson. We don't yeah. talk about Shitterson here. No, Shitterson. Shitterson. There's a reason. There's a reason I want to do this because number one, 
let's just pretend that Colin was taken over by a man because number one, it's always a man. I'm going to state this. It's usually a man who believes that they're higher in power because they want to, they want to upheld women, except women can't do it because they're too weak. I'm just saying. So he, uh, he, he pushes himself into the way and he demands that this is super sexist. And uh, he, he, he starts, he starts bashing on everybody that does this. He bashes on Ben. And then he decides that there's got to be a bunch of, Oh, I want to say, I don't want to be rude about this, but yeah, he wants to put some overweight women into there. He gets rid of the two male dudes and they are replaced with, um, I don't know, a, a robot or a cat girl. Well, well, here's my problem with, uh, with Shitterson whenever, cause I know you're about to bring up that character. What was it? Um, face. It's not destroyer. It's the Samoan chick. It was put in there. She was just oh, pre-made. God. I'm just saying that, like, that was the issue, and then everybody got mad. And it's like, no, you're just you're adding in your own narrative. And then he started screaming that we're just sexist. But to me, it's like, well, I'll do a better example. I'll do a better example. Well, well, what pissed me off about that character, that Samoan chick character, is that fucking I'm from the military, and no. I can tell you right now, a bitch like that wouldn't have been allowed into the military or allowed to stay in the military because she would have weighed too much, was completely out of shape, and couldn't even pass a fucking PRT if she really had to fucking try. Yeah, they That's really what pissed me off about that character. I can't fucking stand it when I see that shit. These, these people going, well, we need real woman body types. I'm like, no, what you don't fucking understand is if you go look at real fucking people, especially folks who are fit and ready in uh are in good shape for being in the military they don't look like that they're not fat dumpy ass women they're women that may be a little thick but they're all muscle and they're in shape they don't have a gut flapping around and shit like that and that's, that's what enough. that fucking character pissed me off about you like, will never see a woman especially a woman in a special forces unit Look like that, and I guarantee you that. Oh, but Nurgle, that that's not inclusive. Fuck off, Doku. <laughs> I triggered. I triggered him. Okay, we're gonna swap it off to something better because this did kill me. Because I know this creator wanted to do it. Uh, Dragota, you guys hear this a thousand one times with me. America Chavez was Dragota's baby, and he wanted to bring it over to Image because Marvel wasn't working with it. Marvel found out, took it away, and gave it to an a writer who gloated, it killed it. <laughs> yeah, who gloated that they never read a comic book in their lives, and pretty much was using that as their main front. It was just kind of saying, "This is beneath me." Got a shit sucky artist, and they just ran around and they just made stuff up, and that would suck. That would suck to be the creator and watching that, and that's what I mean. Like, call them. Like, what if? What if they decided? To- change it all up and diversify it, but not for fun or good reasons, just just for the sake of a narrative. And then you find out the creators, these new creators don't even want to be there. They're just using it for shills or whatever you call it, where they would just want them shekels. I guess. Wait, hold hold on. I just, I want this to be quote unquote on record. So what you're telling me is that they handed over an intellectual property to someone who has admitted they've never read a comic book in their life to produce a comic book, and then it did poorly? Correct. Well, they wanted it to do poorly. It was never about what they were lying. They were lying about all of this. And then when this... them off so he couldn't say anything. It was to punish Dragota. So when when this product did poorly, what did they blame it on? Racists. That's what I thought. Dun, 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 dun. Well, dun, you, you know, it dun, sounds dun. like to me now. Now that Nerd Wonder mentioned that the America Chavez character was the guy that created her, wanted to take that character and salvage it for somewhere else. It, it, it makes me think that maybe Marvel kind of uh, gave the response that, that Capcom gave to Kenji and Afune when it came to Mega Man, which was a big, big 
middle finger and say, you know what? You want your Mega Man? So we're going to fuck it all up. Look at the Mega Man and Street Fighter cross Tekken. Ha! Take Here's that, Kenji. Reminding us that. Um, I hear other stories about that, but that's the thing about it. That uh, That's why I get worried about these total changes, because I'm like, as an artist you know, or writer and a creator, that must suck to watch your whole entire creation not go the way that you wanted to. And then they say it's better, except you see the sales get worse and worse. Like, you were the one that made this, and you're not even allowed to put the paint back on and continue the canvas. Well, like. It- Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll no, talk. I, to you I just meant like like Starling. Starling made Thanos. He wanted to write more for Thanos, and they just kind of pushed him to the side. Like he wasn't a big deal, and he got him so mad he stormed it up and left. And like they never even gave him his own book. He had to buy it. That is so disrespectful. To the extent that yeah, maybe maybe we should stick more to series like Column and so forth that that are made by the companies out here like. Jawbreakers and Column and the Antarctic Press with their USAGI and My Hero Magadamia, if you're into that. Um, these are where people get respect. And I want you guys to always keep your creations. I want you guys to have all the input and say because of the beauty and the heart and soul that I can see when I read it. Like, oh my well, god. I mean, and that's why Image had such a rise in popularity in its time was because it was, hey... You could come here and you can publish your creations, but you get to own your creations. We're just being the vehicle to allow you to publish and distribute it to get your work out there. And and that's why I I get I don't get so upset or and that's why I get so upset at people that go, "Well, I'm you don't don't boycott image. Boycott the don't don't just boycott that creator." I'm like, "Yeah, but you know, I understand where you're coming at, where you're saying like, "Oh, you're gonna hurt the uh, the creators if you don't go buy their work anymore." It's like they'll go somewhere else and publish that work because they own it. It's not like Marvel, where oh yeah, I created Spider Man, now Marvel owns the Spider Man, and I can't do shit with it when I leave. You know, same with DC. But I don't know. I mean, it's just I. That's really telling to me what Marvel did to America Chavez after you mentioned that about that. Sounds like to me there was a little bit of bad blood there. Okay, wait. I just I just want to bring up one point just to just to point out some hypocrisy, uh, especially within Marvel. So, by the logic of Marvel, Mega Man. Samus was revealed to be a woman in a bright blue skin tight fitting jumpsuit. My favorite Where's costume it? from Samus so far. Yeah. Where's all of the outrage over that? Because last time I checked, uh Deviant Art blew up with uh there was outrage Sounds over boring. that. People people got all pissy about the fact that she was in that blue jumpsuit. They were like, eh, it's they, too sexy. They got pissy over for about a month. <laughs> but, uh, Fucking uh, Brianna Wu tried to claim that she was a trans. Yeah, people got pissy over it for about a month. But by the time everything was said and done, people were like, oh, shit, I want to bang Samus. Samus? Mm. Oh, Samus was always an interesting lady that it was just... That was actually built as one. I mean, yeah, she's the first. She's one of the first female leads, and you know what's weird? Like people like now, like you never hear about people calling her the strong, independent woman. Blah blah blah. Be- probably because they don't know her because they don't play games. Because Samus was you play the whole entire game, and at the end you find out it's a woman, and that's supposed to be the surprise. And it's like, huh, I never thought about it. Like, back in the day, that was, like, really shocking for people. And it was never seen as appalling or anything. It was like, cool. They're like, go play the game. I swear it's a check. And it's like, ball. And then you play it and you're like, it's a check. And that was like, everybody loved Samus. And then people started envisioning her and stuff and all these other games. Like, she's a badass that doesn't need to take take anybody's junk. She's and no play. one stopped playing the game. Until Other M, and that's when everybody was like, Other M is not Samus. Samus wouldn't have taken any of this. Like, nobody's talking about, like, like, we're not talking about, like, 
like masculining her or anything. It's just that people that saw her as a as a woman that had a very like like strength to her attitude. Yeah, or they something. saw her as a badass. Yeah, she's a badass, and they knew how to write it well and display it. So. Yeah. I mean, that was, I mean, honestly, whenever the reveal of Samus being a chick was done, like, it made me like the character even more. I was like, oh, well, that's pretty fucking cool. <laughs> I love Samus. I mean, I never got to really play the games. Like, I played them for the GBA when I was younger. It was like, yeah. And it was like, yeah, punch everything in the room. Blow up everything. Turn into the ball. Turn um, into the ball again. That's the, that's the thing that I hate about this, uh, the modern SJW argument of like, oh, there's no strong female characters in games. And there's this ism and that ism and this phobia, that phobia. It's like, okay, we'll use the Samus example. Okay, there you go. There's Samus. Okay, well, that's one example. Okay, how about uh, Jill Valentine in Resident Evil? Oh, she's a uh, bad. Yeah, Jill Valentine is actually the better character to play as opposed to Chris Redfield. Yeah, it, more, uh, doesn't she have gained more HP in the beginning? Or is she runs? Uh, she ha she, well, if you're talking about the original Resident Evil, she's the one that gets the grenade launcher. Chris Redfield gets one boss encounter where he can use a flamethrower only for that boss encounter. What? But Jill hard. Valentine is still by far the better character to play as. Yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, the, the female characters in like almost all the Resident Evil games were always the badasses to play compared to the males. Like uh, yeah, Claire Redfield was yeah, far Claire fucking Red cooler. That's the one I was going to yeah. bring up. Fucking Claire Redfield versus Leon S. Kennedy in Resident Evil 2. No, Claire Redfield is by far the more badass character, and she finds herself in more precarious situations. It, Claire Redfield is a fucking G. It, hell, let's let's say fuck the video games. The video yeah. games, okay, let's say they're not relevant. The yes. main character of the fucking Resident Evil movies, as much as I hate oh, them, God, don't is even a know. female. No. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back it up. I'm gonna. This is where I'm gonna say this. Okay, I, I everybody wants to rag on the Resident Evil movies. Yes. No, dude. Fuck and the Resident gonna, Evil movies. I'm Don't sorry. go down that road. Don't oh, go down that shut road, up, Nurgle. Misha. They're Nurgle. Why? Nurgle. Don't do it. Don't I'm go down it. the fucking Resident I'm doing Evil. Doing it, baby. Don't I'm do it, Nurgle. Too. Silent Hill movies were ten times better. Well, no. Silent Hill was a great fucking movie. Yeah. And as oh, a I'm matter of fact. They changed well, the main character, the first Silent Hill movie. Also they, a female. They changed the main character to a female because the guy said when he was reading it, he felt like this character was a female, not a male. Because he said the character just did not fit as a male. Well, it in makes that more role. sense. It makes more sense. Who the fuck is going to actually go out there and risk their life to try to save their child? A father would do that. It's just yeah. that character was written... It, the guy said when he played the game, he didn't feel like the character should have been a male. It felt like it should have been a female. But they thought but, they were only going to do one, right? And they, and they, they wound up doing only two. And I never got to see the second one. The second the second one I honestly one. think the first one, I don't uh, care what anyone says, the first Silent Hill movie was a very well-done film. And I honestly think it's probably one of the better of the of the movie adaptions into video or video uh, game to movie adaptions. The second one, um, the second one actually has every single Easter egg hint on all the other games inside, and um, they took a little bit of liberties for but um, for important reasons. It the father does play a bigger role into this. It is the Silent Hill three story. It's Silent Hill three. The daughter comes back, or sorry, that like the mother manages to get, bring back her daughter out of Silent Hill. She has to stay in Silent Hill. That's the choice that she makes. But she gives her daughter back to the father, and the father knows that um, the people of Silent Hill are after them, and so he's he raises her on the run constantly to keep her away from Silent Hill. And he gets like kidnapped, and she has to go back to Silent Hill to rescue her father. Well, I, I'm going to watch that movie eventually, but I just wanted to say, though, I think that Silent Hill, out of all the video game movie adaptions, that is one of the best movie adaptions that have been made. Everybody wants to say, no, Mortal Kombat is the best. Mortal Kombat is the best because it knew exactly what it was. A cheesy-ass kung fu action film. It didn't try to be anything more or anything worse, because let's, let's look at it. Mortal Kombat's 
original story from back then was not exactly good quality writing. Uh, oh, today, oh, I would say that you oh, could make a great Mortal Kombat movie today. Uh, especially oh, yeah. if you went gritty and dark with it. Personally, I think it would fit as something like an HBO series, not this bullshit crap that we got for the web series, but like an actual series. I think it would really work. But the point that I'm trying to get is Resident Evil's movies, they are just good old fashioned cheeseball action films that were meant to be nothing more than cheeseball action. And that's why I get so tired of people ragging on them like they, sh they should have been these masterpieces. And they were never meant or made to be masterpieces. I I'm glad they went the direction they went with the Resident Evil films. Well, I don't want to the see them. That I get pissed. And that's I the like the character I Alice, personally. Oh, yeah. I yeah. think yeah. Mila Jovovich's oh, character is a badass. I'm going to counter this. Man. Oh, Alice, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Real quick, let me, let me just oh, let me state my piece real quick. Okay. The reason I hate the Resident Evil movies isn't because of what the movies are. It's simply the fact that they're they're not horror movies, as you said. They're cheeseball action movies. Yeah, because it has nothing they're to do with sex live action. But it's, that's yeah. fine. No, but that was not. fine by me. No, no, I, it's I, not uh, no. Fine. I'm sorry, but that what? if we had made Resident Evil okay. one a horror I'm movie, it right now what would be its right difference. Now. I'm gonna counter it right now. Catwoman is a good movie if it's not Catwoman. That's your answer. I just blew you out. Catwoman was a good movie just because it was Halle Berry. Oh, yes. Nurgle, get the fuck out of here, motherfucker. <laughs> I got God. the book. Yeah. Nurgle, what the fuck? Guest of tonight, who has been devoured by our, our crazy nerd obsessions. We're going <laughs> to. Nurgle. Yeah. Nurgle, seriously, dude. No, no, I'm just saying that movie was good just because it, it was, was fun to look at. It right. not, okay, go I'm not going to say yo, Resident yo, Evil yo, wasn't yo, enjoyable. Yo, yo. Resident yo, Evil... Yo. No, just Nurgle, Nurgle, shut up. Nurgle, shut up. Shut up, Nurgle. Shut up, Nurgle. God bless America. You want to know what, Jonathan? God bless America. Like, I'm going to throw somebody else in. If you can't calm down, and we have to go back on topic... Because <laughs> oh, I did get a question. I did get a question about Column. And that is What's why up? we're here. If that's okay. What's up, Column? Go ahead. Ask Column away. My bad. Uh, uh, people want to know, uh, what, what, is your, uh, what is your process when you're working on the art? Uh, well, to get super technical, um, you get a script from Tim. Um, I take that script. And I turn it into thumbnails, which are tiny little drawings. Um, then I take those thumbnails and I go into Manga Studio, the art studio, and make them into bigger thumbnails. <laughs> and then from that on out, I uh, tend to finish them off uh, with fancy, clean line of work and make it look pretty. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, no, that definitely does. But I, I suck at line work, really. I just got to admit that I suck at line work. Yeah. It's, it, it, the manga studio makes it really easy because you can use vector lines, which, you know, vector lines, as some people know, are like kind of autocorrect themselves. So if you're not great at line work, it can help you out. In that yeah, area. that's what Timothy Lem told me. Damn it. I got to do that more. Like, I guess I have to practice more on the program. I'm hoping that, like, all you kids in art school or whatever, finally don't need to buy Photoshop anymore and that they'll just ask you to get Clip Studio Paint because uh, nobody wants to buy the three, what is it? Like, it's originally like $800 for a Photoshop pack. But if you were in college, you get it for 300 Yeah, still pretty expensive. But I mean, it's just a little more affordable now. I don't really like cloud, creative cloud that much, but um, it's a lot better than paying. Three hundred, four hundred dollars for yeah. one time. But hey, I I think it's better off the the Clip Studio paint. Like as you said, it it's just for artists and so forth, and it really does show. Because here's the biggest gripe I have about Photoshop, and I think everybody that's an artist out here has that. You turn on Photoshop, it takes a good three minutes for it to load. Mm -hmm. Depending on your computer, diet, all you losers have to deal with that and then you click but if you click like studio i mean you click clip studio paint bam right then and there because it doesn't need to put in all 500 extra 
features that you don't need. You don't need all those extra features. Exactly. I mean, Clip Art Studio is, I, I sound like I'm like, I work for them or something like that, but. <laughs> no, everybody uh, says that. They're, they're like, built for it. Hold on a second. Clip Dominic Art. Powell in the chat. Dragon Ball Evolution was also cinematic gold. I will kill Oscar you. material. Ben, ben, ben stop him. Stop him. Tell him it sucks. Actually, cinematic wait, I have, gold. I have, a, I have a very, very important question. Uh, ben. How how much money did you have to pay for that for that uh chicken sitting on the head of your avatar? That's a very expensive chicken. It doesn't come cheap. It's it it looks like it's at least ten thousand dollars. Exactly. Yeah. You, you can't find a blue chicken everywhere. Rare bird. I had to go far, far, far to Europe to get that bird. It's, you, you had you had to uh. Well, not the you had to travel to places far and wide that are yeah. not Last not time. named by the language of humans. Is it a exactly. shiny chicken like from since, Pokemon? Since it apparently cut out, I'll repeat myself. What movie was it? I said was cinematic gold. No, you will Dragon not. Dragon Ball Evolution. What? Oh, cinematic God, gold. Oh my, oh my gosh! No, shut your face. <laughs> Voice, you're a disgusting monster. Wait, I, I want to say if I can piss off. I want to see if I can piss off Nerd Wonder over here. Uh, v Vegeta is stronger than Goku. What? <laughs> yeah, v Vegeta is stronger than Goku. You dumb. No, no, it's true. Vegeta is stronger than Goku. Ben will back me up. Goku stronger than Vegeta. Uh, no, no, Vegeta is stronger than Goku <laughs> currently. You what the heck? I love for Goku. This is You're all terrible. Jonathan Brown. Blood Rain was probably the worst of the. No, I wouldn't even say Blood Rain was the worst. I would say Alone in the Dark was comically the worst. Okay, I'm gonna of the tell Uwe you, Ball. both of those were made by Uva Ball, so. Yeah, you got that going for you. Wait, you know what wait, scares on. me about Uwe Boll? Hold on. You, you want to know what no, scares hold me on. about Hold on. Nurgle, please hold give on. me a second. Hold on. What Alone in the Dark are we talking about? Are well, I'm we talking, talking about the about movie the... Alone in the Dark. Oh, fuck. Well, oh, fuck the movie yeah. Alone there, there, in the Dark. There's, like, there's literally a scene in that film where it's just metal music, strobe lights, and gunfire. And the whole time, all I'm doing is imagining a metal band in the middle of it all just rocking out and i'm going god why didn't he just do that this would have been great if he would have just done that <laughs> I, think that wasn't I, I wanted to go buy popcorn during that scene like i'm not even joking we are not we're not talking about this nightmare it's oh my gosh jonathan brown you're a monster goku versus vegeta america chavez no no <laughs> bad, bad, bad. I <laughs> you. You're all you. You bring shame to the column. You have just tainted the cute, adorable anime chibi girls that just become a large and in charge in more ways than you know. You know, I, I, I think I know. You know, I think I know where America Chavez really can thrive in the world. I think I know what genre and where she needs to go. She would oh, thrive God. greatly. In the world of porn. <laughs> God. Her character is built for porn. I mean, it's a Latina lesbian. It's completely cheeseballish and stupid. Dragona doesn't deserve this. As I said, it just is painful to know that creators have to be humiliated in such a way. Molino was built for porn too, Isha, so shut your mouth and get back in that kitchen and make me a fucking sandwich. I, I will say, I will say this. If uh, if uh, America Chavez was wearing nothing but that uh, that top hat, and it was a live stream on a porn website, I'd I'd probably watch that live we stream. We need Zatanna yeah. versus America Chavez, the triple X version. Okay, there oh, you go. God. <laughs> you are. You need a chill. You're going a little bit crazy over here. You crazy. You crazy. We love you though. You're telling me that I'm the only one that what that would imagine American Chavez and Zatanna. Come on now. No, oh, wait, wait, yeah, you are on. because number one, Zatanna is an adult. 
America Chavez is a teenager. You're and also uh, Zatanna has standards. All right. Yeah, you're, you're, if she's uh, 18 uh, years old, it's okay. Over here. No, it, it's not okay because uh, Zatanna has standards. She doesn't sleep around with just anyone. I mean, America Chavez probably because she's trying to do some <laughs> virtue signaling, whatever else. But you want to know what? No. The, it, it, Zatanna is too good for that. And she knows this. She respects her body and she will use it the way that she deems fit. Yep. And that. Oh, oh, wait, wait, hold Being on. Nerd, Tana, nerd I am wonder. so happy to see, though, that they brought back the hat in the classical look with Zatanna rather than that goth girl thing they did in New 52. I'm so happy they came wait. back to that. Nurgle, Nurgle, you have to give me a second here. Uh, hey, chat, if if Nerd Wonder needs to uh, change her profile picture to a picture of Vegeta and a top hat, uh, type one. Hit that one. What? No. Yeah, no, yeah. Not, Vegeta top and hat. top hat. I mean, yeah, Vegeta and top hat. Can type, I just type one for Nerd Wonder to change your profile picture to Vegeta oh, and top hat? No one person has said this. <laughs> You're losing. It's. I, I wouldn't mind like having like a like a cool one like Ben did. Ben, did you make yours? By the way, did you draw yours? My avatar. Yeah. Oh yeah. I love it. You did good. My it looks like you're right now for it. Um, I, I, I would rather have something cool like that where I put, I put like maybe not a chicken, but maybe my wonder cat or whatever. You know, the one that like Ethan Vetsky ever said, we're all now cats now. And I was like, I drew myself as a cat. I don't know. Oh, okay. Hey, Ben, Ben, can you uh, take Nerd Wonder's avatar picture and no. uh, put her in a top hat and no. make it look like Vegeta? No. I don't know if I fold that avatar it's, it's so amazingly amazing she, she's gonna love it trust me no i don't i can't pay you i have to pay you <laughs> for something it's rude to just demand art out of an artist I, no i'm i'm just putting i'm putting forward a request okay you can't stop it it's just, it look oh my god that avatar i mean with the glasses and the, the hair and the knife i just my, my art skills just aren't there yet sorry guys. it's gonna be amazing Nerd Wonder, he's he's he is going out of his way to give you a wonderful profile picture. I should I should just draw, draw, I should just redraw mine in. Oh my God, Smackso, what are you doing? You demon! <laughs> is Goku making macking up with? I hate you! I hate you so much! <laughs> I hate you! Uh, hey guys, I can't. Uh, I have to duck out. Uh, no. Oh, just kidding. Go ahead, man. I'm just kidding with you. <laughs> yeah, sorry, guys. I have uh, works to get yeah. to. I have work staring at me. That's kind of being neglected no, at the it's, moment. It's fine. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on and answering our questions in the beginning and middle and end. And yep. forgive us for our crazy rants. We do enjoy them. Um, everybody on the bottom below, we do have um, we, we have the Kickstarter. Please join up as we said there's pinups there's sexy girls it is anime it's like hey you got tanks in my waifu and you got waifu in my tanks that's literally the comic it's really good yeah, <laughs> that's literally the best thing to go with check out our kickstarter on uh kickstarter <laughs> uh type in a column in the search bar and it'll take you right to the page um as well as uh, check out my work. You can find me on Facebook under Ben Harvey Art, all one word. As oh, well wow. as BenHarveyArt.com. And um, if you want to see more of my anime and manga work, they're kind of segregated into two different uh, spaces. Uh, you can go to Graphite, Byte, all one word, dot com. And check me out there. And um, if you guys are comic book going uh, people, which I'm sure you are, I'm sure your fans are, um, I will be at East Coast Comic Con this weekend in Secaucus, sunny Secaucus, New Jersey. So it flies nice fast. Wee! New Jersey, yeah. Yeah. Let me know, let me there. You won't be that far away from me. I'm down in the DC area. Leg ass. Hey, yeah, guys, man, it was a uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thanks for thanks for answering the questions. Yeah, man. Anytime, anytime, guys. I hope to be on again soon. And uh, yeah, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Have a good one, man. Uh, thanks for like putting up with all of our crazy ass questions. <laughs> and answer that to the best of you know. I feel sorry for them. 
Um, yeah, like I said, I'm not like much of an interviewee. I'm an RT, keep quiet behind a desk type. So <laughs> you did great. Thank you so much, and I yeah. appreciate it. And we, well, you have a good one, and we'll definitely have to go and um, we'll definitely have to commission you for something in the future. Hey. <laughs> okay. Thanks, guys. We're, I appreciate it. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna commission you for uh for Nerd Wonder and a uh and a top hat. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen, guys. I'm afraid, again, I can't. I can't stop that current avatar, though. But I'll sure try. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one, dude. Bye. 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 All right. Well, we can stick around for a little bit longer if you guys so desire. Oh yeah. You I was do done talking about all my cinematic gold movies that I love. Yep. There are people oh, that God, are Nurgle. Oh, yes, Lord Nurgle, Lord of. The nightmares, you crazy psychos. I love you guys so much for this. Um, and yeah, let's go and see if we can get somebody else on that wanted in for a little bit. And yeah, just guys, don't do check out column. Like, I, I, we were, we, we, we may have jumped a little bit off topic once in a while, but it is a great comic. I have read it, I am buying it. I, I have the $50. Um, tier, the non-poster tier, because I'm not into that thing, but I know a lot of people do, are into that thing. Do check it out. Well, I was just looking at the uh, the Kickstarter. I could definitely see the uh, the Metal Slug inspiration yeah. in it. It does look pretty cool. Well, he wasn't joking about the boobs thing, but it's oh no, 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 there's lots of booby. It's it's great booby though. Yeah, he, he oh, needs if he I needs more good. backers, man. If Maybe. if I get if I get a good comic that has side boob, oh yeah, dude, I've I've got fifty bucks to throw your I way. I mean, it's got classic anime boob, is what I'm saying. It's very it's very tasteful anime. As Tim Morris has just said, quality boobage, quality. Oh, it, it's quality boob. It's not just side boob, but we're talking about quality side boob. Oh, oh yeah, God. look, it's we're not talking amateur titties. We're talking professional titties. Like there's a there's a tact, especially chibi titty. Chibi titty is very is very specific. Like you have to be careful how you draw them chibi titty. Oh. Well, I mean, oh. And I was looking at that's what I was curious about was like this metal slug style, and I was like, okay, does it look like it? I was like, it's not gonna look like lolly, is it? Because I can't stand lolly. What the hell is um, lolly? Lolly is like Japanese anime, but it's drawn where they look very underage. Oh, Lolly! And I was worried when he said like, metal, when he said it's the metal slug style. Is. I was worried. Sorry. I was like, oh, I hope no, this no, doesn't no. look like Lolly stuff. Oh no, it doesn't. But it look doesn't look Lolly at all. It doesn't. It's, and I'm, it's I'm glad really... that he was managed to keep that out of it. No Lolly BS, as Tim has just confirmed. It is very, very good. It's got it's got a really nice style that can immediately adapt to a fully drawn style or a small chibi style. It is phenomenal. And I really like it. I think it should do better than it is right now. So I'm chilling it out to everybody, but we were talking about other stuff as well because we like talk about that. everything. Hey, we brought in one more friends. Hey friends. Brian. Hello, bud. Introduce yourself. We're going to pull in some other people, probably Spidey people because you want to know why? Because we are dealing with some crazy stuff. And you are the master of Venom. Okay. <laughs> well, you have to my name is Greg my guy. name is my name is Greg and Shogun. Just call me Shogun. Yes. I I do things. I draw barely. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, I I got the Marvel previews and I saw something that scared me. I sent it to you, nerd. Yes. It's the it's that new Renew Your Vows arc that's gonna start. Where it's I, like, I, is in. I mean, it's 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 kind of okay. I know you were like, run, nerd, run! And I was, but actually, I'm going to admit it. The artwork looks pretty okay, but it Ooh, is. Oh, yeah, I love it. It is. Just like, it is knock off. Know, it, for, for me, it it's does, just like, you're not made eight. Yeah, it isn't. She's not made eight, but this is April. It is April again, which means the other thing is that um, what I confirms my thought, my theory, was that Annie May is Mayday. They're just, they're all children. It's um, every single daughter in all the universes is all the potential that Spider-Man's daughter can be, will be, and could be. All of them oh. are. And this is just another version personified that we don't get to see often of 
kid who can see who gained her powers early, I guess. But um, it looks like it's a uh, part of the what is that guy's that dude's name again? That 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 mutant dude who was like, I'm stealing blood samples. Oh, I stole the region. No. Yeah, like he he stole a blood sample of Spiderlings, and he was like, I just got the best blood sample of all time. Like he was like. Dude, what the hell is this? And so apparently I, he wanted to make clones of her, and he just did. He successfully made a an anti clone. I also got this um, uh, Spider Man three hundred reprint, and it just it just upsets me because I I'm reading it and it's good, and like Mary Jane looks hot, and like I actually said damn, like not in my head, like I was in school, and I just went damn, <laughs> and I got upset because I'm just like it's sunk in. This is never going to happen again. It, isn't it sad that whenever you see a, a female character in Marvel that looks attractive, you're like, oh shit, snap! Like that's it's, and, and that is what it takes now to get you excited about a Marvel comic book. An old one? <laughs> <laughs> Here, I'm going to permanently share your screen with everybody. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> also, I read... um. Another good issue I recommend is uh, Venom 165, an emotional roller coaster. Okay, uh, guys, I actually have to say when I see the bug eye, the googly eyes, I can only think of one thing. And it's a really shitty children's cartoon from like the 2000s. Maggie and the Ferocious Beast. Oh, great googly moogly. I, I just, I, I know that I saw this, this like animated GIF earlier. I was like, oh my god. That's like, fucking amazing. I, I was to say, okay, I have some questions because we right now have, of course, one of our other greatest things devils do, he's mostly a Daredevil fan, but he he also does a lot with Spidey. I have a few questions for all of you guys about this. That um uh let's see here. I want you guys to discuss how you feel about this brand new Venom. Like uh people have been discussing does he look good, does he look bad? He looks awesome. He looks awesome. He looks like I mean, he, he looks, looks like fine. I mean he looks like um uh a more uh, accurate Nick Bradshaw Venom. Yeah, I mean, like, granted, I know I, I saw the. Uh, I don't know if you guys watched it, but RNS Entertainment covered his take on Venom. He's like the guy. go-to Venom fanboy in the same kind of vein that I would be the go-to Daredevil guy. Um, and like he gave his thoughts, he didn't like it. I went, but I personally looked at it. And went, it looks alright. I, I have no complaints. It looks fine. Yeah, it looks I do like his head shape. Oh, I. I that, like how this your face. Face. Your face. What the fuck? That venom looks like he was okay. sponsored by Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like, I like it for the story itself. That the story seems to be going in a good direction. Like it's not, it's not fully Spider-Man, but it is taking a take that still has heavy it's, effects on Eddie Brock, but puts oh, him into oh, a. Movie. Oh, I mean, and we can see your face. Well, I, I like what oh. they're doing with oh, it. I do think. I had to download this on my phone. I do think that uh, Venom looks good from what we have seen of him. I have a feeling we're not going to see him as Venom a whole lot in the movie. Uh, secondly, I, I'm just... I understand they have to do it with CG, but I get so tired of CG in all these movies. It's, it's to the point where it's like, do we really have to keep doing the CG so much? So heavy these days. Well, it's become know. a new standard of at Hollywood. Everything has to use CG because it makes up for the fact that they have no talent. Well, it also it's another thing too. I mean, if you do that, then you go the opposite. Route. You go the Lucasfilm Last Jedi route, where they literally all they can do is just give themselves self fellatio of real sets, practical effects. Yeah. Even though they've got more CG, you got to take the pros and the cons of each. You know, I'm okay with CGI because like, like Venom ha does like so much weird shit. Like, I can see, like, maybe they, it'd be good for, like, a practical effect when he was, like, walking around. Well, but, like, the I really... Of course, The Last Jedi. The, the original trilogy may have been 99% in CG, but at least the stuff we saw was pretty. Pretty, pretty princess all day long. I say it like this. Um, guys, I think, uh, we have new people that just joined up and nobody introduced themselves. Go into oh, right. As a matter of fact, I'll be right back. I gotta go do something. Uh, well, I mean, nerd, you already kind of introduced me, so you kind of fucked off that rose. 
Okay, true. But you can do it yourself if you think I sucked at it. Well, actually, I didn't even hear a chunk of it because my internet decided to take a dump. Okay. Um, cool. All right, for anyone, I guess, you know, because you've heard my dulcet tones, um, the devils do at your service. I typically run a Daredevil video thing, although I've been doing occasional comic book reviews of other things like Power Rangers, and I took a dump on Brian Michael Bendis. I just haven't done the retraction yet, so I guess I should do the retraction now. Although, having read Action Comics 1000, I'm still not sure if I should do that yet. <laughs> you can join me in dumping on slot any day. Oh, I'd take a dump on slot like it's nobody's business. Ben Riley's a good character. Fuck all of you. <laughs> we know Ben Riley's a good character, but Slot doesn't understand how to write him because he hates him. I think I should actually make Ben Riley a skateboarder. Somebody told me I make him look like a skateboarder. And at this point, I'm just gonna cave in. Because <laughs> Dan Slot doesn't know how to write. Yeah. Oh he does know how to write. He just doesn't know how to write a good story. Ooh. You can write. You know how to spell. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he's not on Twitter, which I'm glad about because apparently people are like he's getting better at writing. But I've seen his stuff, and I'm like, he's just copying things. Like people have pointed out that this new one, the Red Goblin, so forth, and all this other junk. I'm sitting here, and I'm like, this sounds awfully like MC2 Spider Girl, which Dan Slott always stole from. He stole from Goblin God. Anyone? Uh, no, I mean the possession and so forth, the red... Oh, yeah. the, the symbiote goblin, goblin god. Yeah, there's symbiote goblin, the goblin god, the red goblin, there's carnage, there's carnage baby and stuff. It's 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 a lot to be heavily influenced by that, that universe, and I'm like, do your own... Yes, you can, Domini Blue. Sorry. It's, it's funny, it's not it's funny, but yes, you can. It's funny, because... Well, here's here's, the, thing, here's the thing about Dan Slott. Dan Slott saying, I feel like I'm getting better at writing, is like, uh, what's her, what's her fucking face saying, I think I'm getting better at drawing the chick that was... Erica Henderson? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I like how I didn't even room. have to say who I was actually referring to, and they you already knew. It's fine. the same uh, thing. Whoever said, You're uh, both uh, right. nerd, nerd said compared to the MC2, it's like... Yeah, it's hilarious because we were shitting on this several streams ago about friggin' um, how it's like, wow, you really went out of your way to character assassinate everything about the MC2, and now you just can't resist ripping it off. Well, oh, yeah, because it's, it's known as the most know. notoriously popular one. It is the legacy world, sure. but they don't want to admit it. It pisses me off, too, because I really like the Red Goblin, and I'm just, like, mad that Dan Slot has his mutts all over him. Yeah, okay. I could have written a better Red Goblin. Red Goblin could have been played any other way and made it better. The thing Mephisto is... Mephisto upgrade? I don't know. I mean, everybody wanted a Mephisto upgrade, and that's what Dan Slott was pretending it was to get people to buy his stuff. And that is the most deplorable Stevie. thing. That's what he does, though. It's, 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 it's disingenuous. That's, yeah, but that's, that's all what they does. go with. Ooh, Samurai oh. Raku brings up something. I refuse to believe Erica Henderson can draw. Not after that many shitty issues of Squirrel Girl. She did an awesome variant cover of um, Howard the Duck, where it's like Getting a noir back. poster with like a really hot lady, and like yeah, she she, she does it bad on purpose. She does this yeah. on purpose. Yeah. And you, you, I'm glad you brought that up because this is the annoying thing about Erica Henderson. She can draw. She can yeah. actually do good artwork. She chooses not to, and by her own admission, the reason she draws crappy, the reason she draws Squirrel Girl in the way that she does is to, quote-unquote, combat the male gaze. But it's that, Squirrel Girl. She's not a very nice lady. She's just a squirrel that thinks she's a girl. We <laughs> don't think... Okay. I'm I'm Have sorry, you, but I think we should still start the campaign. Make Squirrel Girl hot again. Well, well yeah, I wonder. Here's the thing: has anyone, has Every, anyone seen, everything has aside? Any, everything she, aside. Here's the problem with Erica Henderson. She has been allowed to be essentially lazy and draw shitty artwork. That's under that's the guise of going down well, at 
Yeah. This stuff I'm turn. combating the male gaze. I'm combating the male gaze. I'm going to draw Squirrel Girl and the entire comic in this Thing horribly that. not visually uh, appealing way because, you know, political reasons. And that's fucking acceptable. And it's like, no, you're just using it as an excuse to be fucking lazy. Get the fuck out of here. Like, if like, you're gonna, if you want to do artwork, if you want to work in the fucking industry, do a good job. Or and just look at what like, you're doing is not good. It bothers me. Like, I see I'm the really way she's drawn in um, New yeah. Avengers by Gerardo Sandoval, and I see the way she's drawn in USA Avengers, and it's just like she doesn't have to be hot; she has to be cute. It's not difficult. But uh, speaking of, but speaking of that, has anyone seen like social media? We have a lot, a lot of artists in this community, like out the ass. Has anyone seen Miss Sashi's Squirrel Girl? Nope. Um, uh, do you mean when she dressed up as Squirrel Girl? Well, no, Miss Sashi does the pin, like she all, she does all the pinup care uh, artwork, and she for the call the various Marvel character females, and she did Squirrel Girl, and it's like, oh damn. <laughs> I can see if I can find a picture of it. Maybe she could. And the funny thing is about all the politics out there, there is such a huge double standard going on. There are people who, who actually know how to write good, who actually does fit these roles. They just don't do, choose them because they actively refuse to play along with the stupid ideology game that <laughs> Marvel No, exactly. That's my... That's my point. You get people like Erica Henderson, they use this political ideology, uh, this political narrative as an excuse to be like, I'm going to do shitty artwork. I'm going to do shitty writing. I'm going to actively choose to be lazy and I'm going to defend myself under the guise of I'm trying to, yeah, I'm in the case of Erica, Hen Erica Henderson. I'm gonna if, do shitty if, artwork because I'm combating the male. If games. they cared so, about diversity, to me, if um, they cared about. Hey, oh. I'm sorry, I gotta butt in real quick. Uh, I gotta get going, nerd. Thanks for having me on tonight. That's fine. If you, you have a good night, night. we'll stay on for a bit more, but we should head out in a bit. I think. Yeah. So y'all have a good night. Thank you for. Thank you again. Uh, once again, nerd, you're always welcome on my stream later on whenever you want to come on there. So take care. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, right, night. Bye, dude. See you tomorrow. Sure. See you tomorrow. Oh, like, Later, Earl. Okay. Right. This is what this is what bothered me. If they actually cared about diversity, they would have they would have not have canceled Robbie Ray's Ghost Rider, a well received SJW series. Oh, hang on for me. Yes. Yeah. Right. I think the only reason they canceled him is because he isn't fully SJW. You know why? Because what? it was actually a good comic. <laughs> yeah. I remember when the Robbie Reyes uh, Ghost Rider actually very first came out. And I enjoyed it. It was actually a good comic. I enjoyed it a lot. I didn't give a flying fuck if it wasn't uh, the traditional Ghost Rider that I was used to. I didn't give a flying. I didn't give a flying fuck about the fact that he was Hispanic as a dude that's working in a fucking. Uh, Car workshop, essentially, you know, that fixing car and doing manual labor. Also, he was a good bash and saying that Danny Ketch will always be my favorite ghost writer. Ironically, the iron, the great irony is that for an SJW character, the writer in the most stereotypical, cliche Hispanic place you could think of. Oh, he works at a car shop. He's a high school dropout. And he has to take care of a family member. He lives in Compton. Yeah, he, was yeah. Like, he, was, he was a great fucking character. It was a good book. Like it was a really good book. It was a good character. It was believable. I thought it, it was, was Robbie Reyes was a fucking good character. Race doesn't like, matter, uh, you know, like gender doesn't matter. It's all about execution. Yeah, yeah I, personally, I personally found the uh, the book to be a little on the bland side. It's just you know, just something about yeah. You know, it's funny for like someone who actually likes traditional superhero storytelling. There was just something about it that just kind of went like, eh, it's not for me, you know? Well, uh, well, I can I can understand that, and I actually do agree. Uh, issue three, four, and five were rather bland, but when he actually met Johnny Blaze. That that's when that book started to get good. 
Volume two was awful though. Oh, Post volume. Nah, I won't. I won't deny that volume two was not a good book. I don't but... think I. It's it's starting on volume five. The one nerd when he met Johnny Blaze what? when what he decided that he was he was a ghostwriter right when he started to realize Robbie Reyes was a ghostwriter and he actually knew what you know what he had gotten himself into that's when the book got good yeah. and then they canceled it. Like, oh, this is going to be in the new Avengers. That they cancel everything good. Let it be known as well. I'm going to shill out Spider Girl again. Let it be known that Spider Girl is historically within Marvel the longest running female superhero series with its own solo character of all time. Longer than any other female on Spider Man because he turned Peter into an absolute wuss. I mean, dude, the longest running female hero for 10 years without it stomping. I Was figured out, I think I know how to fix Marvel, guys. Here's what you do you get Dan Slot, you, you put him on a spin off superior octopus book, you keep Cheap Sadarsky on Spectacular, and you put Tom DeFalco on Spider Man. And then call it a day. Falco said he oh. would only come back to comics if he could write Spider Girl and his Spider Girl. Like he was like my Spider Girl, and we're all like, "This man is good." But yes. oh wait, so so we need the uh, we need the superior superior Octo Girl. But that's what's that's what's gonna no happen. no no. <laughs> hey, <laughs> your face. I don't think so. <laughs> don't you just Ghost Driver? And for Kevin, Julian, I get to see the Batman Ninja movie. I want to see the Batman Ninja movie. It looks good. I hear from a few people they weren't that interested, but it turns out it, they said it was very Naruto like, and they don't like Naruto. And I'm like, oh, I like Naruto's dad. I'm in. There you go. It, it's very That's anime heavy. Awesome. Like yeah. they were like, it's very anime tropey, and I'm like, no, duh. It's made by like 16 anime companies. The character oh, God, designer for great. Afro Samurai. Yeah, the 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 well, a bunch of people from Psychopaths, people from from uh, Kill a Kill, like all like oh, tons God. of the elites came in. It was like DC was like, you guys want to make Batman, and they all just like busted out of the room. They're like Batman because they're all in superhero hype. They're no, all no. In superhero hype it's like in the trailer, in the trailer, Batman, Batman, <laughs> like dude, Batman, like dude, they got team Epic to do a commercial for it. There is a pop the soundtrack commercial for it. Actually, nerd. Dog, you fucking you Batman make a you make a Marvel you make a Marvel comic book where everything reads from right to left and everybody loses their fucking minds. Okay, what were you saying, Double Do? Uh, have you actually read the Batman manga Child of Dreams by Kia Asamiya? Nope. Oh wait, that's a thing. Jesus. I have not. It's a ba- yeah. There's there there are multiple Batman mangas, but that one just really st- stood out for me. It's like it's probably the most traditional. Basically, Batman goes like deals between oh, God. God and some dude is trying to replicate all of Batman's rogues gallery, and then eventually himself. You guys, I just I'm playing DBZ Fighters and that I got Pink Broly. Oh my God. What? I'm gonna play as Pink Broly. I just got a new color and it's Pink Broly. Is that good? I, I don't know anything. It's, it's pink Broly. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's amazing. Know. Okay, it that's good. Cabo Cabo if, if, cake. If, you lose, if you lose, then you know that the, in, the internet kind of make fun of you. He did. Oh, birthday oh party. God. I would love to make. Uh, oh my god, that sounds like an awesome series, Captain Carrot Cake. <laughs> sounds like one of those campy space adventure <laughs> or wannabe do superheroes. You know, uh, do you know what Captain Carrot Cake comes from, dude? I know where Kaka Carrot Cake comes from. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, Did you get the Piccolo gag? That was amazing. Yeah, I loved it. I was like, ah. <laughs> oh. Piccolo, the weird, like I love fucking Piccolo. He needs he needs more love in his life. Like that was such a badass. It's kind of like um, 
Sonic with Knuckles and like he used to be the rival and then Shadow appeared and then they're like, get away Knuckles, get out of here. And then they just chuck him across the room. Pretty much. Switchboy brought up uh, Captain Carrot is a DC character. But the real question, Switchboy, is, is Captain Carrot Cake a superhero? Yes. There is one out there. Uh, oh, wait, wait, nerd. And I think nerd. Nerd, nerd wonder. I, I have a question. Yes. Uh, so, uh, about about that top hat. Okay. <laughs> what about the top hat? It, it, do, you, do you have the top hat? Because I'll, I'll I'll order the top hat for you. I do not have a top hat. Uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a top hat. Why I Why want, do I need a top it hat? With a, it should be it should be white with a orange on it, so that it can be carrot cake. Are we gonna make? <laughs> is it gonna be like one of those Lolita hats, or is it gonna be like a full real? Oh, oh be we, need to make it, top hat. we need to make it a Lolita top hat, and it needs to be oh. white and orange. It's gonna be amazing. Oh Jesus, That's nerd wonder, <laughs> you're down for this, right? I, I, I guess. Run nerd. It's, it's, Run. It's, it's, Is this it's, a good it's, idea? It's, I don't know. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out how to put super chats on my system because I was in super <laughs> chats. <laughs> 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 oh my <laughs> god! Like, okay. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Hey, I really want to talk about. Oh, I really want to talk about 165 <laughs> Venom, and like how he gets <laughs> kidnapped. <laughs> He saw so hard. It's terrible. Venom 165? What? What? Venom 165. It's not bad. Right? Dude, no. be, listen, you can love Venom all you want, but it ain't gonna beat the Terrifics. I need to read that. Actually, Terrifics is really good. It's Holy really shit. good. Like, I, I'm in love with this. I'm like, I'm like, then they're like, we're bringing back the Fantastic Four. It's like, who's writing it? Yeah, I'm gonna go to Terrifics. Uh, <laughs> I'm How is it? I know, like, he's starting to get seep into the stuff I actually give a shit about. Yeah, okay, this is why you turn around to DC, and we're gonna read the Terrifics, because it's awesome. And look at this, it's like, but, like, like, did you read the latest one? It's really good. I have to get, uh, I have to get, uh, Mara, because apparently that wasn't on my poll list, and now I'm sad. I got the latest, uh, Damage. I didn't think it was bad. Oh, I mean, you didn't like it? I liked it. I, I didn't think it was bad. It wasn't oh. bad. Also, uh, I got I to gotta, I gotta pick up the next issue of Shattered Grid, because Power Rangers and that book is awesome. The, the only other person covering it apart from me is no Yellow way. Flash. I get into the comic scene until I get like all the collection, uh, all 25 volumes to the Invincible collection. Oh, I only, the, the third compendium comes out in June. The last one. Oh, really? Yeah. I need to get. I need to get all the compendiums. That's how I'm gonna get it. Like I was gonna get all the trades. That's too much money. So I'll just get all the compendiums. God, I love that series so much. Ryan Notley deserves a better writer. <laughs> I stumped uh, really close to the end, and it makes me sad. What? God. Okay, let's talk about how awesome Invincible is. And how like was good. The artist is now going to Nick Spencer's run on Spider Man because that's it will be its only saving grace. Except that won't even save it, motherfucker. That's why I'm gonna pirate it. Wait, honestly, no one wants Nick Spencer on the book. No one wants. <laughs> well, we knew what was gonna happen though. All the Spider Man fans knew. <laughs> Tim Morris asks, "Did Faith die of diabetes yet?" <laughs> 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 To answer that, no, uh, Faith did not die of diabetes because she's using her powers to float, uh, float through the air. So <laughs> that's how she works. How does Valiant go from like Faith to like a book like Rye? <laughs> You know why? Okay, Art Hotfly, Art Hotfly, the Whalers of Star Trek Four Daughter. People are weird. <laughs> you okay? But actually, I, it's Donovan. You know, Nick Spencer. Apparently, one of his big plot twists is that he's reintroducing the black suit. 
back into fucking Spider-Man, and apparently it's through a bunch of symbiotes taking over, which means more Venom shenanigans. And I thought about, like, Web of Shadows shit, and I'm looking at that and going, how long... Start the timer. How long do you think until by the end of it, it's going to end with Eladra? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's going to pull that shit again. My no, vision, I don't know. It's him. Oh, my, my vision of Dick Spencer went from what it originally was is, uh, to to like the same thing, but he like scribed the Hydra logo in, in very crudely in, with a with an ink quill pen, and he goes, "I'm smart, I'm smart." What is he, Homer Simpson? Ah, it's a smart. I hate it when it's like when people are like, "I deconstructed a character. I'm intelligent." Hey guys, I don't have a comic. Oh. Look, guys, I'm the next Alan Moore. I deconstruct things. <laughs> Uh, Alan Moore, you psycho son of a bitch. Why did wizard, you know? act in crazy ways? Why do I have to fear everything? Why is everything a nightmare? Nerd, are you okay? I think. I'm just saying. <laughs> next week, <laughs> if, if Spider Man sucks, next week we're going to hear Nerd Wonder going, kill everyone and then yourself. <laughs> Nick Spencer's twist Peter kills Uncle Ben because it's pizza time. Oh. <laughs> He stole that guy's pizza. And then Uncle Ben said, you're late. Not because he, was, he was like lactose intolerant and made him eat pizza. <laughs> what? They played that in the funeral. Oh, my God. Hey guys, I gotta, I gotta run. It's my so, it's my well, we fun. should just end it right here anyway. It's gotten a little bit long. We're starting to All right. cause things to get even more psychopathic than, than when Lord Nurgle right. was here. I'll drop for now. Bye, so guys. We're going to conclude tonight. Um, everybody, do you have anything else to say before we go? Well, I plan on hosting another stream tomorrow if I can find a subject in time. If anybody wants to uh, join in, they can hit me up on Discord. It's like everybody yeah, I usually hang out and offer this too is in there now. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Okay. Um, I'm just, uh, so everybody on the link below, it'll talk about Colum the comic and uh, do check it out. It's really good. And other than that, I think we're going to see you guys later. Uh, yes. I'm actually, I'm actually going to head out to Infinity Wars premiere tomorrow, one of the premieres tomorrow night. So I will probably be doing a post non-spoiler, uh, my impressions on the whole thing. I might even pop up a stream, see if anyone wants to jump in on it if anyone is going to see it tomorrow night as well. Gotcha. All right. We'll see you around. All right. See you around. Believers.